How to build the Black Gates Twin Steam Engine. This is part 8, a bit of painting and making the base. What I'm doing at the moment is using a diamond burr to flatten off the top part of the base. The engine base that is, not the base that I'm about to make. And also I used a needle file and finally I got the base of the engine to be quite flat. Normally I would just machine a recess around the hole to make it perfectly flat. But because of the shape of the casting, I can't do this. So I just thought, well, a bit of handwork should do it OK. The holes in the base are 5 32 of an inch in diameter, and this is tapping size for 2BA. What I propose to do is thread these two holes and bolt the engines to the main bed plate using four 2BA countersunk bolts. Then I'm going to put lock nuts on top of them to make sure they don't work loose. First of all, I use the diamond burr, and this really does remove quite a lot of material followed by the needle file and then as you'll see very shortly I use some very coarse emery cloth on the end of the needle file to smooth it all out. This part of the job was quite labour intensive but I do think it was worth doing. The finished product when the lock nuts in place will look much better than it would have done had I have put the lock nut on the sloping surface. Here you see the emery cloth and the needle file just to finish it off before painting it again with some etching primer. And as usual, I'm using Precision Paint Single Pack Etch Primer. As I intend to use a paintbrush to apply this to the engine, I'm spraying some of it into the cap. And don't forget, if you're doing this, first of all, leave it in the cap for the paint to warm up because it's cold because it's just been sprayed. And the other reason is you need to let some of the solvent evaporate so the paint thickens up a bit. While on the subject of thickening up, from time to time I make videos and I call them forthcoming attractions on Patreon. And to any Patreon supporters watching, once again, I always thank my Patreon supporters for your support. But you've seen the videos because you are two months ahead of the normal YouTube videos. Anyway, I uploaded the video to my channel and made it public. And very quickly, I received a comment from a chap who comments all the time, really. And he said, what's happened to your voice at two minutes 20? It sounds really deep and low. I replied saying it was probably an earlier video that I did before I bought some very expensive special equipment. I listened to the video and then I realised, no, it's because I have a cold. So I'd just like to say to these professional commenters, I am not a machine, I am a human being. And sometimes I get a cold. And my voice sounds slightly different. And despite having the cold, I still try and publish a video for my Patreon supporters every day. I had to wait until the paint dried. And now it's dried, I can mount the engine to the brass base. I use the set square to arrive at the distance between the two ends of the crankshafts. Then I made some light scratch marks on the brass, just in case I got confused and thought I was doing something else. Then I used my metal cutting bandsaw to cut it to the correct size. And as always these days, using my marking out blue sent to me by a man called Norman, I'm putting plenty of it on this piece of brass. And for any artistic viewers watching, I call this one a study in blue. And now I've marked the positions on the piece of brass where the main engine standards are going to fit. Now it's over to the milling machine and I'm tapping it down onto the packings to make sure it's perfectly square. I'm using a slot drill for this job because it's for cutting slots and I'm going to cut two slots in the piece of brass. This is a new milling cutter so it's very sharp indeed. You will also notice that I'm trying to cut against the brass all the time, although I can do it the other way round. This milling machine is rigid enough to do that. You will notice that the last part of the job is to use the milling cutter up against the scribed line. If you start on the scribed line, you might get it wrong. So it's best to mill out the centre part and then go very carefully down the scribed lines. This footage is running at high speed and you'll see that I keep putting a paintbrush in the image. This just brushes away the chips. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. Time for the usual health and safety warning. Wear PPE for this. Eye protection is essential. And do not, under any circumstances, touch any of these brass chippings with your bare fingers. These small particles are very, very sharp and they'll go straight into your fingers and cause you a great deal of pain. And, of course, it's important to get the brass chipping out of your finger. And to do this, I usually use a pair of nail clippers and some alcohol. The idea of the alcohol is not to drink it for pain relief. It's to sterilise the nail clippers because you do have to dig quite deeply into your finger 
to find the offending piece of brass. Once I set the final depth on the left hand slot, I didn't touch anything, I just took the cutter across and started machining the right hand slot. I didn't have to do it in stages on the right hand slot, because I could do it in one. Luckily brass is a very soft metal, and as I mentioned earlier the slot drill is brand new and very sharp. And here's the finished item. This is a little bit of an experiment though, I will explain as I go along why it's an experiment. As you can see from this clip, the two engines fit into the slots, but the left hand slot is slightly wider than the right hand slot to allow a little bit of adjustment. I just have a sneaking feeling that when I assemble the finished engines, I will need to slightly align them. At this moment in time, I am not 100% sure that this arrangement is going to work anyway. I will find out in due course when the engines are bolted to the piece of brass and the crank webs are fitted with the extended crank pins which will be held in alignment with a fine machine piece of phosphor bronze. There's quite a way to go on this build yet, but it's starting to develop, it's starting to get there. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.